In this video, we continue discussing discrete random variables, and we have a new definition, which is probability mass function, or PMF. So every discrete random variable is going to have a PMF, and the way that we represent it is with P and then the subscript X, if the random variable is X, and then we have parentheses and K. Um, so the way that we can think about this is the probability that our random variable X is equal to K. Um, if you want to think about it a little bit more mathematically, I remember that a random variable maps an event to the number line. Um, so we can think about the probability that x equals k is really the probability of all elements in our sample space such that our random variable maps that element to k. All right, so we've seen a couple probability mass functions already, but we just didn't um, describe them as such. So, for example, we saw the binomial distribution and its PMF is n choose k times the probability of su success to the k times the probability of failure to the n minus k, and this is true for any k going from zero up to the number of trials. And then we have the hypergeometric, um, and for this one, let's think about having a drawer full of black socks and white socks, and they're all mixed together, and we're drawing them without looking at them, maybe we're in a dark room. So in total, we have B plus W socks. B is the number of black socks, W is the number of white socks, and we draw N out in total, and K is the number that are black that are drawn out. Then um, the probability that X is equal to K, or in other words, the probability that we draw K black socks is equal to the number of black socks choose K times the number of white socks choose N minus K, divided by B plus W, or the total number of socks, choose N. And this is true for all values of K such that B choose K and W choose N minus K are defined. So we have binomial, hypergeometric, and then in the last video we saw the geometric distribution. Um, so for this one, our PMF looks like one minus R, where R is the probability of success, to the K minus one times R. So remember, geometric is how many times you have to try before some event happens. Um, so it always ends with the having success. So we have the probability of success times the probability of failure to the k minus 1. OK, so let's um, look at a couple other probability mass functions. PMFs don't always have a special name. Um, so here we had bi binomial, hypergeometric, and geometric, but we can make a PMF for any random variable. So that's what we're going to do here. So in this first example, we have a $1 lottery ticket, and X is going to be the amount of money that you gain. So you pay $1 for the lottery ticket, so we have to take that into account. Um, so if you lose, then you are gaining negative $1. And if you win, the prize is $100, which means you get the $100, but you already gave away the $1, so you're gaining $99. All right, finally, let's have uh, the probability of winning be one out of 100. All right, so you can either win or you can lose. And so x takes on two values, negative $1 and $99. And so we have the two outcomes, and now we need to attach the probabilities to these outcomes. So what's the probability that x is going to be equal to negative 1? Well, that's the probability of losing, which is 99 out of 100. And then we're wondering what's the probability x is going to be 99. That's the probability of winning, which is 1 out of 100. So here's our PMF. Um, we have the probability x equals negative 1 is 1 out of 100. The probability x equals 99 is 1 out of 100. Sorry, that should be 99 out of 100. OK, so if we wanted to um, write this in a table like we sometimes do, then we could have k p sub x of k, and then we write in the different values. So k can take on the value negative 1 or 99, and it takes on the value negative 1 with probability 99 out of 100, and it takes on the value 99 with probability 1 out of 100. So this is one way that we could represent our PMF. All right, in this next example, we are rolling two fair four-sided dice. 
and we're going to have our random variable x be the sum of these two faces. Um, so here I've drawn a little table so that we can understand what the sums would look like. So on going down here, we have die 1, and then across we have die 2. All right, so each die is four-sided, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4 for die 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 for die 2, and if we get a 1 and a 1, then the sum is 2. If we get a 1, the 2, then the sum is 3, and so on. So I've just filled in all the sums inside of here. Okay, so these are the different values that x can take on, right? So x could take on 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. So let's start our table off by writing down the different values that x can take on. So we could get 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We write those down. And since these two die, dice are faired, then each one of these entries in this table are equally likely. So the probability that we get a 1 and a 1 is 1 16th. The probability that we get a 3 and a 3 is 1 16th. The prob probability that we get a 2 on die 1 and a 4 on die 2 is 1 16th, and so on. So if we want to know what's the probability of getting a 2, let's just count up how many 2s we see and divide by 16. We only see 2 once, so the probability of getting a 2 is 1 16th. The probability of getting a 3, well, we have two of those, so the probability that x is equal to 2 is, sorry, the probability x equals 3 is 2 over 16. And then the probability x is equal to 4. We count up how many 4s we see, 1, 2, 3, and so we have 3 16ths. And so we keep going through this until we have all of these probabilities. All right, so then this would be our PMS for our random variable x, which is the sum of two fair four-sided dice. All right, just for fun, we can note that the probability of x being some value k is going to be greater than or equal to zero for every k in our sample space, right? This is, this is non-negative, 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 and so on. And then also, if we added up um, these 1 16th, 2 16th, 3 sixteenths, all the way down, we would get one. All right, so um, we've learned a little bit more about discrete random variables. We learned how to describe the values that they take on and the probability that they take on those values, and we do that with the probability math functions.